88 films. Hello, hello. Yo. Welcome back. Another episode of Store Credit. Um, bing the little button thing. <laughs> we have the usuals. Andy. It's good. DC. Today What's we have up? a very special guest all the way from New York. Yes, sir. Mr. Soul Street. What's good, y'all? What up, what up, what up? Happy to be here, man. What's good, y'all? Yes, sir. Good. How you doing today? <laughs> good, man. Good, good. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a beautiful L.A. day, man. The weather's yeah. nice. It's sun's out. Birds chirping. You know, all is well. Thank <laughs> yeah. you. Hell yeah. yeah. Nice. Uh, what brings you out here this weekend? Ah, uh, Complex Con, man. I came for Complex Con, man. Yeah, yeah. You know, to try to salvage and squeak up a few bucks. <laughs> yeah. While yeah. also <laughs> having a decent trip to L.A. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was rough, though, man. It was rough. rough. Yeah. How, how was the overall event? Ah, the 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 ASICs, the ASIC con was fine, you know. I guess I like, was really. I mean, the overall event. I mean, you know, the gallery department ASICs were really the main feature and really the only thing that was yeah, worth it. To, yeah, I, I hate to even say the only thing that was worth it, but there really wasn't much other product that really made a dollar there. Yeah. You know, the way that it was happening in previous years. Even though I know the last couple of years have been a little low, like. Yeah. Um, it was all right, man. It was, it was nice to be back, like, at an event like that. I don't go to events like that too often. Like, I just did the Got Sold that I was telling you about, like, a month ago. And that kind of also prompted me to do this. I'm like, oh, I want to start getting my face out there, start doing more things, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I came out. And, you know, it was all right. It was it was, it was was complex con. I enjoyed the conversations a little bit. Like, you know, I sat down and watched um, the Sneaker of the Year conversation for a couple minutes. That was nice. It was nice seeing, you know, people in the industry, so to speak, um, you know, and, and sort of reconnecting with old people that I knew already. So that was cool, you know, and it's, it's a trip to L.A., which is always fun, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Got to hang out with a lot of the homies, have a couple good dinners, you know. So that was great. And, you know, I'm pretty sure the trip paid for itself at the very least. But, I mean, there's yeah. not much more <laughs> after that, to be honest with you. It was rough. Yeah, rough? Rough. Yeah. yeah. Rough. I but, mean, like, you know, it's exciting, though, because, yeah. like, you know, again, like, you know, you know how we do when we go to these things. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, it's that I, I kind of get an adrenaline rush and a thrill out of doing these things because, like, it's like, all right, cool. Now, 7 a.m., doors open for the public at 9. But we already know the deal. Like, if you, yeah. you can't stand online waiting to get in. If you stand online waiting to get in, you're not, not getting whatever you want. Like, exactly. you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, all right, how are we sneaking in the building this time? You know what I mean? And it worked <laughs> extremely easy both days. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. The first day, we just walked in with a crowd of people that all had, like, employee bands and just kind of like walked right in with them at the right moment and it just worked and then the second day we found like a loading dock door that was open and just straight ski slid it right in there you know what i mean yeah. so it, I, I enjoy these events because of things like that you know what i mean it brings me back to my like more rambunctious adolescence you know what i mean i get to you know be a little sneaky be a little sly yeah. but it's only just fucking sneaking in a complex car so it ain't no danger or nothing yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. what's the worst thing gonna do tell me to get out for, i'm going through <laughs> yeah. another door yeah, yeah exactly yeah. um yeah. So it's fun for that reasons, you know what I mean? I, I enjoy the camaraderie of coming with the homies, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, ugh. But, ugh. That's yeah. pretty much it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's great for the socializing <laughs> yeah. and fun, but to make money, man, it was rough no, out yeah, there. Yeah, everybody said that, that it was cool to see all the homies, but other than that, it was just kind of like, eh. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's some other good activations, man. I got this beautiful Barriers jacket, man. Barriers had a really nice activation, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And they have really nice product. This was a good drop. Oh. You know, some of the, the clothing, they had the Jordan, the Tyson, and the... um. And the Spike Lee hoodies and T-shirts, and those were nice. But, you know, the price points on barriers was pretty up there. There's yeah. not a lot left after you pay the retails. And they were re they released the whole collection online at the same time, so that kind of killed that. Yeah. Um, Denim Tears had the Cactus Tears, Cactus Plant, Denim Tears, Levi's collab, which was a little cooler than I even thought it was before because when I got there, I realized they were all one-off vintage yeah. pieces. So it's kind of like how Chrome Hearts does where they get the vintage Levi's and yeah. adds on to them. They, they all got – they these are all vintage jackets and pants and then, even the bags were cut up from vintage jackets and pants. So that's a little cool, but it also makes it a little difficult on a reseller standpoint because now, like, every medium is a different medium. Yeah. Every large is a different large. Like, you really got to try that shit on and find yeah. the right person for it. So that becomes a little difficult, you know? But um, it was nice. The hats were okay, I guess, the, the denim tears yeah. fitteds. I kind of felt like the fake fitted hat that he was, like, talking shit about online. Yeah, I felt like that one looked better than the one they released, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah, you okay. know? So yeah. it there was a that. weird without the team. Right? Like, yeah, yeah like, I don't know. I don't know. Without Or at least, like, a one big thing in yeah, the, in the yeah. center. You know what I mean? Um, 
But that was cool. What else was there that, that I thought was? I'm not gonna lie. I feel like the star of the show mm-hmm. was the uh, Better Gift Shop Averex that was done by P Shines in New York. Like one, and he's like a OG graffiti dude in New York City. Um, big old school low head. This guy probably has every Averex and polo sweater from '98 to '03. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Like this guy's got everything. They Better Gift Shop let him actually design the jacket through and through, yeah. and it was so much better in person because like I've seen all these new Averexes. I'm, I was an old Averex. Yeah. guy growing up you know yeah. um and the leather on this thing was just so much better it was such a well put together jacket it was sixteen hundred dollars though Jesus. but um it was a beautiful jacket you know that was yeah. like the star of the show to me to be honest with you because i'm not even an a6 guy so yeah. other than like the resale for those a6 i don't care you know what i mean other than yeah. being able to flip them for a dollar that's all that's the only thing <laughs> that excited me for it you you're know? like fuck it i'm gonna get them yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah. no yeah that's definitely good. complex con a lot of homies were in town um, there, there was a lot of events too. There uh, was, yeah. there was, there was, there was, man. I, I think I got food poisoning over the weekend, though, man. Oh, it's been bad, nah. bro. It's been bad. I'm a little queasy right now. I don't feel good. I was yesterday. We was really supposed to go to this eBay event, like really yeah. at the town yesterday. Ain't do none of that. Stay home, throwing up. Every two hours, I was up. It was terrible, oh, bro. It was terrible. Fuck. That's why. LA got me sick this time, but yeah. <laughs> At least it paid for itself. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. At least, trip at least, definitely yeah, paid for itself trip. at the very least, which is fun. You know what I mean? That's yeah. great. If every trip could be a free trip, that would be amazing. But um, you know, at the same time, I mean, you know, everything sucks right now, yeah. man. Like, ain't most resellers ain't doing as good as they used yeah. to be. You know yeah. what I mean? I ain't like counting other people's, uh, but I can't imagine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's just a bad economy, a bad time. It to be in this sort of business. You know what I mean? Um, right. and there wasn't even enough like cool clothes and things. I feel like because. It's really clothing now is really the big thing. At least in New York, clothing is the shit that's selling like yeah. that. It's not really sneakers. We're not, you know, it, the GRs are selling for under retail. Yeah. Those new 11s, yeah. the gratitudes. Look how nice those gratitudes look, man. Nobody like cares. the full leather upper. They'd be so, it's such a well put together shoe. Shit's below retail and they yeah. come out in a month. It makes yeah. no sense. Like, yeah. you know? Even those suede uh, Royals. We Beautiful. That would have been a six, seven hundred dollars shoe minimum. I reimagine yeah. Royal, right? And yeah. I get it. Yeah, people want a regular Royal yeah. back. Yeah, yeah, sure. Blah blah blah. Right? But like, <laughs> yo, it's a nice fucking Jordan One. Nobody cares. Doesn't yeah. matter. No, yeah, and it's it's cool to see see you say that because you were there at the pinnacle of yeah. streetwear. Yeah, like yeah, you yeah like when it really started. Were like mm-hmm. the main focus of the Complex Supreme stuff, um, and then obviously coming down when Round Two came to New York and then stuff like that, like. So what do you think of, like, the state of it, of everything? So, like, it, it's funny because, like, on one hand, I think, like, you know, I've been here for these highs and lows before. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I remember when Adidas started taking over and motherfuckers couldn't sell Jordan GRs to save their life. And everybody was like, oh, my God, now what? You know what I mean? Yeah. Um and, and, like, things corrected themselves, sort of. You know what I mean? And, like, we've had, you know, recessions before where, like, people have been broke and it's kind of like, eh. But the thing that's weird to me now is it's not so much only the fact that, like, I feel the money's not there in general for this kind of stuff, right? Like, I think people are making the decision nowadays that, like, well, whether I had the money or not, I don't even want to do this. Like, I don't yeah. even want to, like, be buying stuff for over-retail or be buying, you know, Jordan 1s. Like, they're just... It, it's sort of a shift in that, which is a bit different, and I'm not sure how it's going to play out in the long run, you know what I mean? But it's tricky, man. It's tricky. I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> and then you talk about the Adidas thing, and it's funny because it was before... Um, we got there. Mm-hmm. Um, how was that being in New York? Like when Kanye kind of started taking, or not even Kanye, just Ultra Boost, then Kanye. Like, how was that? In New York, it was fake great for us, yeah. though, in a way, because like we had a lot of product in New York. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Adidas really fed New York well, sure. and like Adidas really fed a lot of the boutiques. Like, yeah. you know, they would, we, I remember going out for releases, and it was like, yo, there's four Ultra Boost dropping today. There's four NMDs. There's four different color NMDs and two Ultra Boost and a Yeezy yeah. all in one day. And every NMD, no matter how ugly it was, was $50 on top. You know yeah. what I mean? No matter what it was. Yeah. Um, same thing with the Ultra Boost and the Yeezys. It was hundreds of like, it was just, there was a lot of money flowing. It was weird because it was in the Adidas space. You yeah. know what yeah. I'm saying? But there was a lot of money flowing in the streets back then. So it was a nice time. I mean, look at the numbers of like, even like the Zebras, the first Zebras. Bro, $1,500, insane. two bands. Yeah. Insane. You know what I'm saying? Like, even the first 750, I think you guys had first access to it. The gray the, joints. The gray one, yeah, I remember white. that. We killed Dover for that. Dover Street Market. What? <laughs> oh my God. I was, it was a riot outside yeah. practically. Man, and one of the security homies, shout out to you, my man. You know who you are. One of the security homies, we was like the top. 10 or 15 he was like yo I'm gonna let y'all in and I'm closing the door and that's it so just y'all do what y'all hurry up and he let us in and locked the door and we was the only people to get the the um the 750s out of Dover except who else backdoored him after I 
don't know. We got us out the front for retail. That was great, man. Yeah. <laughs> and I remember selling pairs though the first seven fifty for like a rack that for because like we had them like really first. Like it was yeah. before the online drop, and like sure. nobody knew there wasn't a stock X yeah. like that back then. So we yeah. didn't really know the market. So and it was an expensive sneaker that first seven fifty. That first seven fifty might have been like three fifty, close yeah. to four hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. And there. like I remember thinking like I remember like texting and DMing with customers and she's like yo bro I'll give you eight fifty for that like yeah. and I'm like ah, it feels too low for the madness that I'm seeing happen yeah. but it was a weird fucking sneaker it's yeah. still a weird fucking sneaker that yeah. first 750 high with the zipper on the yeah. side I hate uh, zippers on male, male sneakers hate it especially on the side <laughs> yeah. down the middle fine whatever flight yeah, positive yeah, cool yeah. but a zipper on the side that's like a real feminine touch to me for some yeah. reason it's, I don't know it's just in my head that was great too yeah so it was yeah. it was so weird because we didn't know the market and like you know last thing we want to do is be stuck with it if it tank because it was all those like is this gonna tank and people were talking shit about the fitment remember it was like oh these yeah. things fit yeah. uh, size and a high. we yeah. didn't know what the fuck was going on with yeah. these things back then so um <laughs> it was scary you know what i mean yeah. but you know lo, lo and behold look what it did you know yeah. what i mean cost the ruckus for sure what yeah, yeah. yeah. easy definitely that's like three bands turn the turn the sneaker in and and those first pairs yeah. i think i sold one for like 2400 like the last one i had yeah. but like i sold like the first and i had maybe like four pairs because i had three bodies that day um and the, like the first two pairs I had, I sold for like a thousand each, yeah. and then one I sold for like fifteen. You know what I mean? Because like once I sold the first two, it took the burden off of the rest of them, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. But yeah, that was one of those weird things where I know I made a mistake a little bit. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was so it's so scary, you know? Yeah, it was new, uh, and yeah, especially exactly, with three fifties exactly. and a, just Adidas in general, because you're so used yeah. to being a Jordan guy. Exactly. But the funny uh, thing is, everything gives you that feeling nowadays. Yeah. I feel like the sneaker game now, it's it, it's so much different because like there's there's so much more bulk available everywhere. Everybody has access to fifty pairs before. <laughs> release right yeah. yes. um and it's it's turned into like this game of like trying to fuck the guy the next guy for 25 dollars over a pair fast enough like everybody's trying to do that fast enough before the sneaker tanks it's yeah. what happened with these gratitude 11s it's what happened with these fear threes it's what happened with the satin ones like every single sneaker it's like all right i got them three weeks early for 30 dollars above cost i got some 50 dollars above cost because next week they're gonna be retail like and the shoe hasn't even released yet yeah <laughs> Yeah, you know, crazy. I almost wish it went back to like the times where I could only get five or six of a pair of sneakers, but like at least I was making two hundred dollars a pair off them yeah. shits. It's the same nice. thing I'm making now, trying to sell twenty pairs. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. You know, early what I mean? sneakers used to be like the shit. Like yeah. people, they used to pay fifteen hundred dollars for early sneakers. Yep. And now it's now it's moving into clothing. Yeah. But it's weird the way it's moving into clothing because I feel like a big part of like this new clothing market that we're in and this new like streetwear clothing market, especially in New York City. I'm not sure how the dichotomy is out here in LA for it, but like the streets is really starting to embrace these smaller brands yeah. like yeah. like just the guy with you know 50 60 thousand followers in a sweatsuit brand like yeah. these like and uh, it happens at a crack store at vault you know yeah. like i watch him sell like and it's nice stuff and i like the guys that are doing it like i like watch him sell these lost intricacy sweatsuits and these rich reza sweatsuits and sp studios and i'm like i've never heard of any of these people yeah. right like they're, they're such small niche brands right and he's getting in 200 sweatsuits a week blowing through them and I'm just yeah, like, wow, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm just, just, wow. And like, people are really supporting. And I don't know if that it's, I don't know if it's the fact that these things are at better price points than like, you know, the, the, the more established stuff, or if it's about the fact that like people want to be wearing something that nobody else is wearing, yeah. but it's yeah. really moving into that space. I just feel like with sneakers, everybody knows that like, if I don't get that have to have sneaker, that, that, that must have shoe, there's another must have shoe next week. You know what I mean? And no matter what shoe it is, I'm getting it at a good price because the market's a tank. You know what I mean? So it's just, it's weird in that way now to me. I think it's a little bit of both because it's like, I see Crack post them and I'm like, what is he posting? And then it's just like, you're saying that he's moving 200. But the thing- watch it. It's crazy to me. Yeah. I think in New York, people really- Go towards like a sweatsuit, like a nice sweatsuit. Because yeah. I remember sweatsuits when, is it this winter. Yeah. I promise you, for, especially in New York, sweatsuits. I've been saying this for two months now. Sweatsuits is it this, yeah. this winter. I remember when we dropped, and I wasn't a fan of it. Around two, the mm. the insect sweatsuit. Oh, I remember from, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah. every dude in the LES was buying it from us. They're like, "Yo, you got that sweatsuit?" And we're Crazy. like, "Yeah, it's right there." <laughs> yeah. and, and I was just to me, I don't. I wasn't a fan of the whole sweatsuit at all. But mm. it was comfortable. Yeah. yeah. But mm. every fucking hood dude. Or just any dude in the fucking LES was coming in. Yo, yeah, yo, I got that, that sweatsuit. Yeah, yeah. And I remember <laughs> the hottest seller was the size small. Crazy yeah, for it girls? Was just like, no. For just the, little dudes. Yeah, just like, yo, <laughs> yo, you got that small sweatsuit? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. Sure, <laughs> yeah, sure. We made fucking 300 of them. Yeah, sure. but yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. it wasn't 
it wasn't Supreme or it wasn't Palace. So the dude was just like, I'm the only one with this. Yeah, was, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like Supreme is so ran its course yeah. damn near now. And yeah. it's so sad. It hurts my heart because yeah. I built my life off yeah. Supreme, basically. You know what yeah. I mean? That Like you mentioned that complex documentary, like the complex, um, Sold Out was the name of the documentary. Yeah. I don't even think it's available anymore. I think Supreme finally got yeah. it pulled a couple of years ago. Um, but like it was like a it was sold out. The the, the hidden economy of streetwear or something like yeah. that. Yeah. And yep. um and it just. It, it highlighted like this whole underground reselling market that nobody really knew about. You know what I mean? And it was just there's so much money. I made so much money off Supreme in its heyday. You know what I mean? Yeah. And now I can't. I couldn't sell a neon sign this year. You know yeah. what I mean? And granted, the neon sign was insanely expensive. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, it's just it's telling that like I, I they made ten of them. I can't sell one. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I can't find nobody that wants that shit. Yeah. Like right. nobody wants that shit. How the complex thing come all about? The complex Emily Oberg, man. Yeah. Emily Oberg. Yeah. Shout out Emily Oberg. Rich and spicy. Rich and sporty. <laughs> rich and sporty. Shout out, <laughs> shout out Emily Oberg. Shout out yeah, I got to work She followed me when she started working at Kiff, which I felt the way about. But, you know, because uh, I'm a scumbag reseller, I guess. But, um, yeah. so, uh, yeah, she used to come out to the lines doing like little snippets yeah. and shit for complex, yeah. like asking people stupid questions, like, oh, like, you know, the this collab came out with uh, you know, a picture of of uh Mike Tyson on it. Do you know how many knockouts he had? And niggas she'll find the one dumbass that's like, Oh, he was a boxer? You know yeah. what I mean? Like <laughs> and then it got to a point where people would answer stupid just because they knew it would get them on yep. the complex snippets and it was yeah. funny, you know what I mean? Um, so she started coming out and I'm I guess I'm a pretty personable person to begin with. So she would come out, talk some shit, and I would like, you know, always go extra hard. You know what yeah. I mean? Because to yeah. me it was like I had a little free publicity. I I had three thousand followers back then, you know. Yeah. If that you know yeah. um and to me it was just about the publicity of it and i remember because like i remember the day that like she i remember she asked me to film this right she was like yeah we're gonna film in the street right behind supreme cool i did it right and she was like um she was like so the other guys that are filming it the other reseller guys they have like their face blocked and their 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 voices changed so because like they're scared of repercussions from the store yeah. right and i was just like well if i do that then like nobody's gonna know who i am you know what i'm saying yeah. so i was like one of it racks too but racks wasn't on it as a reseller because he was he always skated in that reseller selling space but he was always trying to be more of a stylist and yeah. uh, a designer so to speak you know what I mean shout out to Rax I love Rax um, but I just remember thinking like nah this, this isn't cocaine cowboys like I'm not selling dope yeah. like that like you know what I, mean? I don't care if Supreme doesn't like it right but like in fairness they really tried to like ban the shit out of me they would like they oh, banned sure. a couple of my bodies from going in like he yeah. knew they were working for me they couldn't come they, he wouldn't yeah. let them shop like back when Price used to run the store and like yo bro they, they made me eat shit a bit so to speak bro I remember yeah. going in there and be like yo let me get an XL on that and like nah we don't got no XL and they get an XL to the nigga behind me yeah fuck. like you know what I mean like they, yeah. they kind of really hated me for that shit at first for a little yeah. while yeah. but I stayed the course and you know what I mean kept just eating shit with a smile and then eventually they started fucking with me yeah. and now I'm pretty cool with all the homies at Prem. now everybody there's the homie you know I'm yeah. still blocked on the Instagram but, you know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> how, how was it at first was was there any like of your homies on the background being like yo what are you doing why are you putting your face out there uh, or was it love off it wasn't the why you putting your face out there nobody really everybody thought the people that put their face out there were fucking stupid for like they yeah. didn't put their face yeah. there y'all was, okay, okay. was doing too much right yeah that's what everybody felt but what it was was a lot of shit talking from the homies like you giving away the sauce nigga you giving yeah. away the uh, sauce yeah, blah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. and like oh like complex didn't pay you for that you bugging i'm not doing that without them paying you for that <laughs> but like I, I literally like that shit popped and i literally got all my followers off of that yeah. Like yeah, that's facts. how I got little thirty, forty thousand followers I have now yeah. is because of that complex documentary. Like so I, I it it legitimized me in the face of so many people. And like what people forget was like it was kind of the wild west back then in reselling. Like there was so many people scamming on PayPal and yeah. sending invoices and you never get your shit. Like that scamming shit was heavy in the sneaker reselling industry as far as anybody shipping you anything. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It was very gray. You know, right. so that documentary really legitimized me in the face of a lot of people. Like, oh no, he really does it. He's really there. We see that he's there. So let yeah. me just give him a chance. So yeah. I feel like that documentary, in a way, fake made me the reseller. It made Soul Street yeah. what it was. It you know what I mean? You. Yeah. But that's that. It put a verified check without doing it. exactly. Yeah. That's exactly what it did, in my opinion. Yeah. You know what I mean? And sure. for that, it was worth it for me. And for yeah. that, is that kind of shit is always worth it for me. I'll come on your show, this show, that show. Yeah. Like I'm doing, I'm always doing it because I want to get my face out there because I want you to buy things off me. You. I want you to buy things off me and syndicate. <laughs> yeah. You in the area, pull up. But like that, yeah. that's what it is at the end of the day for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, because I remember it, it, it was the Wild Wild West because the I heard about you when I first landed in New York mm -hmm. uh, when round two was opening, and it was like a couple months before it actually opened, and it was around the off-white. Um, what was the fucking the Wall 10? Street thing? 
Oh, remember yeah. the Wall Street thing? Like, yeah. So much money was made there. Yeah. I just, I remember that was like my first like. That was a great fucking. Just seeing event. it, I went, I went with uh, Orlando Nike Fiend. Oh, <laughs> Nike Fiend in Orlando, what up? <laughs> Bro, I went there and I just like, I never seen anything like that. The way people were moving and out, he was just like, watch, it's gonna be crazy. Yo, you know what's funny though? Like I just started realizing in the past few years that like the way we be moving out there is really different. No, it's different from it's other places. Sure. Like you know super what I mean? Like yeah. when I started really going out to like things like the comp complex cons or like you know different events in LA or Chicago and all-star weekend and stuff and it would be like I remember some of like the local reseller guys be like there's 500 people online bro like what are we gonna do and I'm just like you gonna do oh, yeah. Yeah. you know when you're like it's just you gotta you gotta, yeah, you're not gonna like, give up like you that. gotta do it. I'm walking in there like it's my building I own the building y'all renting this for me what are you talking about excuse me sir like right. size nine please like you know what I mean like I, it's just and I guess and, and for that I love and for that I'm blessed to be a New York nigga like I love the fact that like New York did that to yeah. me I yeah. guess right because I didn't even know it was like a thing specific until I started going other places you know what I mean yep. but but yeah the New York resale community really does move differently it's, it's disrespectful though it's no, rude it's, it's disrespectful it, it shits in the face of anything that's like authority or any yeah. like any sort of fairness you know and and i and i get that that sucks for a lot of people and i understand the plight of the guy that was sitting there since 5 a.m but like i also need to get mines i'm sorry yeah. you know like i know i know i'm sorry i remember in la i came after all that stuff i came back 2018 and jordan brand had an event and Crack, RV, uh, Flex, <laughs> all you know, all the typical. Yeah. Yeah. The, the Jordan Brand event, we got invited to it, but they, you know, obviously they got in somehow, some yeah, way they got yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. We get in, damn yeah. yo, <laughs> bro. I remember in. them looping the lines, switching clothes, and all the yeah. LA people were like, "What's going on?" And I was like, "Bro, just watch. This is, this is hilarious. <laughs> just just, just, oh, yeah, just yeah, stand yeah. there and just watch what's gonna happen." Yeah, we've been doing that bro. switching clothes shit forever. And Boy, then out, what? Of no, out of nowhere, they're in the corner with 40, 50 pairs of shoes yep. while they're saying one per person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just kept doing it. I remember just seeing crack um with a tank top on well with a wife beater and i would just be like <laughs> all right <laughs> not, doing work. not saying anything it i was works, just like so yeah, yeah man it works it works yeah it and works, I, works. <laughs> I remember even me myself i i got my pairs and then rv's just like yo you want 350 a pair and i was like there you go bro in front of everybody i'm like bro i don't want these like, yeah take them take that was enough resales right yeah. uh yeah it was that weekend. yeah man i was pissed off i stayed at complex that day that was the weekend of complex con yeah, yeah. right yeah. and we were chasing the yellow Dunks, I think that was the canary that canary. week. The canaries, yeah, yeah the canary dunks, right? Yeah. And like, fuck. and they were like, nah, fuck that. We going over here to get these. And I was like, nah, I'm focused on these canary dunks. Yeah. Like, so I stayed, and that was the wrong move. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah, the wrong. That was, that was a big wrong move that day. I was like one of the top five wrong moves I made was not going for yellow resales, yellow not for resales. Because yeah. I just, you know what it was too. That was like right after there was two shoes like that, right? That and the um the Jordan one, South Beach Flamingo and Igloo. Oh yeah, the yeah, Soulfly yeah. joint. The, the Soulflies, the right? Yeah. Those two sneakers fucked me up, right? Because <laughs> before that, there was like the there was like there was a couple Jordan ones, like the um the Union one. They had like the top three, uh, the top three mm -hmm. mismatch gold one. Yeah. Remember? And then there was like the regular release one that came out everywhere. There was a mismatch, but they had yeah. the, like the mismatch one. And it was supposed to the only place in the world that ever supposed to sell it was at Complex Con. And then like a couple months later, they snuck it out at Dover, Mercer, a couple like of the top top tier places yeah. had it, right? Yeah. And they did that for like three shoes in a row. So I remember being like. Fuck that! They gonna re-release them shits, yeah. and they didn't re-release them shits. Yeah, and that's the same way I felt us. about those, those the the igloo and the flamingo. Like fuck that! They gonna re-release them shits, yeah. and they didn't re-release them shits. So yeah. that hurt. That hurt. No, yeah, because sometimes you expect. And, it, and the canaries then... was a shit show. Yeah, boy. didn't they shut it down, or am I tripping? Yeah, they shut yeah. it down. Hell yeah, they, they shut, shut it down. That, and weren't weren't the uh, the off whites there too? Was, the, the was it the Rockefeller week? and then that was, that was the year before? Yeah, that was the year prior. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Canaries was the year after. Yo, I remember like yo, we was trying to flip the entire. I'm sorry, Nikki. We was trying <laughs> to flip. Like they they had like you know they're they're yeah, like they, yeah. they built like this box and then like yeah. it had like a window for you to shop yeah. at right and the, the box said like the you know the branding diamond whatever whatever right all that shit and like when they said it was shut down we was still like all lined up around this thing and we was trying to like push it. We literally had our hand under the wood and was <laughs> trying to flip. We was like fuck it. They gonna take the sneakers out of here. We flipped this whole shit. We just all gonna grab the sneakers. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, people. That's just that's just man. That's just be like a, it'd be a high mentality. It, 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 just, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we was dead ass trying to flip that whole shit, bro. And I remember they had the nerve to like put them shits on a pallet and like drag them out of complex. Yo, oh, that was annoying. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah I remember the, the and cracking RV was just like ah. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest stories was like getting the line shut down. 
was like when it's a line and they're like, all right, if nobody's getting shoes, if I'm not getting shoes, nobody's yeah, that's, getting that's shoes. That's the mentality, though. Yeah. Like, all right, cool. You want me to stand on the back of 300 people and nobody's getting this shit? Fuck it. Yeah, all we're right. shutting it down. <laughs> <laughs> that dead end is horrible. Because I'm not that person <laughs> yeah. in regular life, yeah. right? Like, in regular life, I'm not that, like, just that much of an asshole. At least I hope I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, in sneaker life, like, as you know, Soul Street is that person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Dre ain't Soul yeah. Street's that kind of person. Like, you have to be to to to, to sort of have made it and get the right, like, we wouldn't have made and I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't have made the money I am if I yeah. was just, like, abiding by the rules. It just doesn't work like that, sadly. You no, know yeah. what I mean? But then that's also the hype, and that's also, that's what creates this whole sneaker world. Those, those like, it, it was horrible to be there. If you was number 30 that day and you swore you was going to get a sneaker, you was yeah. camping out for two days, then, like, it you sucks that we shut it down for y'all, and I'm sorry. But at the same time, like, if, if now looking back on that, you're like, yo, that shit was crazy. Like, that, that's what builds the memories. That's what built the community. That's what had everybody talking and buzzing. That's the things you were, you know what I mean? People reminded me of that complex thing, of the, the, the Nikki Diamonds just this weekend while I was out here at Complex. Yeah. I'm like, yo, remember? The, yeah, I do remember. Yeah, it was fucking great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if it would have just been, if, it would've, if they'd have just sold 100 pairs to the first 100 people online, it, you know, it wouldn't have been what it was. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, facts. And, and you can argue those points back and forth all day, but... The, the part, the side of this that I live is that side. Like, I, I love making the money off the sneakers and shit like that. But at the end of the day, I'm really a sneaker person. Like, yeah. I am a sneaker person. I've always been a sneaker person. Sneakers have always been what, like, fake meant the world to me. And I know it's just sneakers. They don't really mean the world to me. I have children and live a whole life now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, it, it's just, like, as a kid growing up, like, we ain't, I was poor. Everybody was poor. Like, we ain't have shit. I grew up in Ravenswood Projects in Long Island City with my grandmother. My mother didn't even raise me. I was living with my grandma my whole life. Like, I could have on the crappiest clothing as long as I had what was deemed to be a cool sneaker. I was the man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, right. I remember, like, I remember begging my grandmother for, like, Grant Hill feelers. Like, I had those Grant Hills. I was it, boy. <laughs> and I wore them shits down because the first pair, remember, had the logo and the embroidery low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they would, like, the sole, the heel drag got so bad that, like, the feeler word, the embroidery yeah. of the FILA <laughs> on the bottom Shame was, like, fucked up because I wore the sneaker down because yeah. it was also such a shitty fucking sneaker. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> it was crazy, man. It was yeah. crazy. But, yeah. Yeah, it's it's like sneakers meant people. the world to me. So these memories that like I create whilst fucking shit up and whilst getting the product and making the money, yeah, that's the spice of my life, so to speak. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Fucking sneakers. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, because I remember um, when I I'm telling you, when I got to New York, you and Luda Don for some reason just kept coming up on my feed. Yeah. And I was just like, I bro, love that for I, us. I was literally Shout like, out Lou. you guys were like mad intimidating on social media. I was just like, damn. But then I met both of you guys, and I'm like, bro, these are the sweetest dudes I ever met in yeah, my life. Yeah, man, I'm a fucking great person, man. I'm a great person. Yeah. Uh, hit me up, ladies. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then, am I mistaken, but for a bit, you were at ComplexCon, like, helping them out, doing stuff? At Complex? At Complex. No, at, at Complex, or am so I So, it was, it's always been a weird relationship with me and Complex. Like, yeah. I was cool with people there, not with the establishment, oh, okay, so okay, to speak. Okay. You know what I mean? And, like, I always kind of wanted to do more with Complex, but, like, it's just, they never really, like, I'm not fucking begging you a sucking dick either. Like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. so, like, with Emily Oberg, I would do those little clips with her every so often, right? And that was cool. And then, like, the whole documentary actually came out, right? Yeah. And then, um, Tony Mew. He had, like, the Life of Complex yeah. series on Complex, right? Mm -hmm. And I would do, like, once a month, I'd go up there with Tony and, like, you know, talk about the latest Supreme drops and talk shit. But that wasn't even really, like, Complex hitting me up to do that. It was Tony. I'm cool yeah. with Tony. So he was like, okay, yo, come man. to my show. Come do this. So, like, I was never really cool with anybody. Like, I never got a free pass to Complex Con, even though I yeah. don't know how, how <laughs> I couldn't. You know what I mean? You got passes to Complex Con. I couldn't get a pass to Complex yeah. Con. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I, we had to sneak in there and do the bullshit Word. to get yeah. the passes. You know what I mean? Um, and thankfully, I know enough people around everything that it always works. You know what I mean? But I always, I always fucking kind of like, felt like fuck them in a way because yeah. like damn blood like I, I talk good shit like and y'all just keep hiring people fresh out of college with the, like fake journalist degrees that are like semi into sneakers and it's like yeah. I feel like that about a lot of like sneaker publications and podcasts and fucking nice kicks and bad kicks and wrong like all these fucking places they just hire like people with a resume and shit and it's like dog like i've been doing this shit my whole life yeah like literally sneakers have been my fucking life right and i almost hate to say that sometimes right yeah but at the same time it is what it is and it's like yo i can't get a check for talking some shit yeah i can't get a check for some consultant work or something yeah. like you know what i mean oh, but true. but because i'm a scumbag reseller like it's like it's it's crazy even like on that sneaker of the year pod um Panel. Panel, yeah. Like how they don't have a, a reseller up there of some sort yet. Now, yeah, that's six, seven years it. into ComplexCon, uh, like y'all don't even like the, the sneaker, the 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 
the business side of the sneaker world and industry, like, d- doesn't even acknowledge us. Why? Because people hate reseller. Like, yeah. but it, it is what it is. We're a big fucking part of this, yep. and we get no acknowledgement of it. Once the guy That's builds true. a store like you, and you're a nicer person, and you've never been, from what I know, like, you know, the guy in the street fucking skipping people online. Yeah. So you don't. I feel like you don't have that that same thing sort of attached to you. You know what I mean? Like that stigma. So, Exactly. Yeah. So six. So you get past this complex yeah. con, right? And that's good for you. No shade or nothing. You know what I mean? You should be. Yeah. But yeah. so should I. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. it just doesn't work that way because yeah. scumbag reseller. I guess I don't fucking know. It, yeah. And it's crazy that I've said that before. It's I know. Just like yeah. the the reseller gets so much hate, but low key the reseller puts so much money back out into the community that yep. people do not see. Yeah. And it's just like we're not 100%. just taking, taking. I mean, taking. look what we doing. Look what we doing like this weekend. I don't know if you know some on Instagram. Like so, um, and you know Briss T- TMB, yeah. Yeah. right? <laughs> my my boy, shout out TMB Briss, right? Yeah. I love Briss, right? Briss yeah. is one of my closest friends, right? And I love Briss, but he's also like most people. If you don't know Briss, you don't even want to like, you don't even want to be next to the nigga. You know what I'm saying? Know. Like yeah. Briss is kind of like a shady New York dude, right? <laughs> um, in, in many respects, yeah. right? Yeah. But like he's also a reseller, right? And now we are on, we're on our sixth year of our our give back, right? Yeah. Which is just us, you know, fucking throwing some money together, going to the deli and getting fucking. This year we're doing 500 sandwiches and like he packages the sandwiches in a little cellophane with a can of soda and yeah. chips, and we running around the city just giving back. And we started that because it was like we be using the homeless people's bodies online all the time, so we trying to give them ten dollars, twenty dollars, free anything we can because that's money. Money time and it's yeah. a different mindset. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So say, oh my man, my man, come up out that tent, get on this line, clean yourself up, get on this line, dog, go buy me that shoe, come back out, right? So like we was using the homeless people, especially at Mercer, that was like our thing, right? We was using the homeless people to like get more pairs and this and that. And then Briss, asshole Briss, one day was like, yo, bro, we all got to get together and like start giving people some money or like do a little give back or some situation. You know what yeah. I mean? Like let's feed the homeless, yeah. right? That was like his thing. So we was like, ah, right, cool. We on our sixth year doing that, and it kept getting bigger every year. More sandwiches. Now we give away socks and sweatsuits we try to collect all the used sneakers and it's all very haphazard with absolutely no organization like everybody's dming talking shit right now yo you gotta send money come on guys and this is (laughs) wednesday we're doing it you know what i mean like um you know we give away little nips we go buy buy like a bunch of little vodkas and nine nine bananas mad pre-rolls we're giving the homeless people a little bud a little look (laughs) you know it's thanksgiving man get a little fucked up your situation is already rough you know what i mean (laughs) um but like shit like that like and we're always trying to do Good, like yeah. you know what I mean. Like uh, for the most scumbag reseller niggas I know is always trying to do good in life. You yeah. know what I mean yeah. to sort of balance it out. But I mean, it's, it's just never any help or recognition or even acknowledgement from any kind of like you know business yeah. point. You know what I mean? Like I got homies at Nike that ask me questions about shit all the time. Like, yo, what do you think about that? Right? Yeah. And they'll ask me like on a homie level, but like you can't cut yeah. me a little consultation check. I can't get fucking seated a pair of bullshit sneakers every yeah. now and again. Like it's just nothing, right? It's yeah. just, you're gonna ask me some questions, I'm gonna answer because I'm a nigga that knows, but yeah. I can't further that. It's fucking crazy. Yeah. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they, they'll yeah. ask you for like homie advice, and then they'll yeah. take it to the corporate side, yeah. and then be like, yeah. blow it up. Yeah, yeah. It's a one-sided relationship. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. But they do pay people for this yeah. shit. They do. Yeah. yeah, that's the. I think that's the the, the fucked up part. Like you, you always kind of see it, like from the outside looking in. Like, yo, damn, they're getting paid to do that. Yeah. I remember one time, we we were leaving a spot, and it was like midnight. Oh yeah, and, he and, told me. Yeah, and I went home, <laughs> and I'm like, just like I'm like, bro, I'm smoked. Like I'm just drunk, whatever. And he's posting like on the store credit, like store credit pod tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. And it's like 1230 at night. And I'm like, bro, you know, people are getting paid like six bread <laughs> to do what you're doing. And you just left the spot and you're just doing the post and you're not getting paid anything for doing that. 100%. But I always think of that. Like some people are getting 100%. paid real money yeah. to do shit like that, yep, you know, yep, yep, like yep, a post yep. or this or that. That's what I'm after right now, bro. Yeah, of That's what I'm after right yeah, now, yeah. man. I should have been after it a long time ago, but I always thought to myself, fuck that. But now, fuck that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How you would know? you say that you're, like, adjusting to the economy right now? Horribly. Like- <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck adjusting, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, bro. I got five kids. Yeah. yeah. I, I got to get dated out of date. They haven't adjusted shit yet. <laughs> He's still dad. And dad I, just, uh, I ordered my daughter Uber this morning. I sent my other daughter $85 this morning for yeah. some shoes. Like, it's just, it never ends, bro. Yeah. It never ends. It never ends. No, yeah, I'm, not, I'm doing horrible <laughs> adjusting, bro. Dad, I'm, bro, I'm spanked lately, yeah, man. Yeah. That's why I'm here. I mean, I came to Complex Con because, like, yo, things are so rough. Let me go out there and try to make a dollar. Exactly. Like, things is bad out here right now man yeah, it's bad it's like bad it. it's bad for a full-time reseller yeah and no facts. they're definitely facts. Uh, and then you. these women don't want to go to cheesecake factory Come on. yeah the whole <laughs> list that list is crazy bro that's uh, so insane nah. we put that out was hey. it ruby rose that's crazy yeah. right. I, I, I think on that we gotta take a break yeah we'll take yeah. a little break <laughs> <laughs> back a little break
Yeah, bro. man. <laughs> Hill Street with us. Yeah. What's up, man? Glad to be here, man. Glad <laughs> yeah. to be Glad here. to have yeah. you, man. Thank it's you, stories. Too, man. Bro, it's so funny because, like, um, same thing, just understanding the reseller is such a big thing. No. Mm-hmm. And I think, like, for at least for round two, for, like, me and DC, we understood the difference between the type of reseller we are technically and the type of reseller that you guys are. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. two different ones. Yeah, 100%. And I remember, I remember the first time we dealt with it was with Guala. Oh, Pudge, Pudge yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I remember I was just like, bro, just let him get the fucking shoe. Like, it's not that big of a deal. I remember it was it was right before he got there, and same thing. We had a line because round two was fresh. Yeah. Um, and Guala, same thing. You just see him in front, and I remember Russo was just like, why isn't he standing in line? And I was just like, bro, he's not gonna stand in line. Yeah, he's exactly. not his thing. Like, he's just gonna walk in with the first five people. He's gonna get his shoe. Yeah. And I remember it was like this little thing, and I remember I think one of the employees was like, "Yo, get in line," and Pudge was just like, "No, blah blah blah," and Pudge pretty much threatened that he was gonna beat him up. <laughs> and I'm like, "Bro, just let him in. Like, yeah. he's gonna. Nobody <laughs> wants the shoe that he's here for. Just let him fucking in. It's not that hard. You yeah, know? Like, yeah, let yeah, him in yeah. with the first ten people." Yeah, but, it, yo, but I'm not gonna lie too. From like the New York City resale standpoint, when round two first opened, yeah. like. Even it happens with damn near every resale store that opens in New York City. Like if we don't like, it's almost like who told y'all y'all could do that? Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying? Like what do you mean you're not gonna let me in? Like, yeah. This ain't uh, y'all, this ain't your store. Like yeah. I've been trapping on this block. Like you know what I'm saying? Like since yeah. for, I, I know the nigga that live upstairs. Like not anymore because somebody you know he couldn't pay the rent. Now now somebody pays five grand up there. Yeah. But like these is our streets. These is our like I remember really feeling it was like a like who told them niggas they could like yeah. open up in New York and not like so they gotta pay dues. Like of course we going up and we running up in there grabbing all those steals. Like yeah. Yeah. And that was really the mentality. Yeah, no, you yeah. Know? I remember it took a couple months for like us to finally all yeah get start a, like because yeah. yo I didn't go inside of round two for like the first like year they were open yeah. I think like bro I didn't even like I was just like I don't know what I don't know that place I don't even want to know that place like fuck them like yeah, you know yeah. what I mean and then I started like getting cool with them because of Lou because Lou yeah. Lou like started going in there all the time because Lou will go anywhere there's a dollar yeah. Lou don't give a fuck um I still be trying to have morals and shit right yeah. which probably just hindered me more than anything but um. And then, like, once I got cool with you, I was just like, fuck, I should have been in here from day one, bro. Yeah. Like, because it was so much money to be made as, like, somebody that hangs out around, too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. things would walk in and, like, it would just be like, holy shit, I know somebody that might want that. And, like, you know what I mean? And I did the little four, and it used to even be more than that, a little $40, $50 spread here and there. Yeah. You sell three, four shoes just sitting in there for two hours. Like, I made $200 sitting around, too, for yeah. two hours today and got to hang out with the homies, talk shit, smoke a little weed, get a little food. Like, it was it was great, man. I missed yeah, yeah. that. I missed it those days. was the first one. And I remember he would yeah. do the story thing. Like, he would oh, post yeah, shoes that we had for sale, yeah, yeah. mark them up 20, 25 bucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And he knew he was going to get 20 bucks off. So it's exactly. The 50 exactly. Bucks. Yeah. That's what it would be because yeah. we they're like, ah, right, yeah, I was cool. You're gonna give us a little twenty dollars off the price of, of the ticket, right? Maybe a little no tax, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. And that right there with and like, yo, my man, I, I got the shoe, but it's at round two. This shit cost two fifty plus tax, that's two eighty. Just give me three hundred. Meanwhile, we paid two forty for the shoe. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That was <laughs> like that lasted forever. Yeah. That was great. No, and then even you guys moving stuff that we could move, like bringing in, like, oh, I'm stuck with this from Supreme. Yep, yep, yep. And that shit would sell in there. Great. Yep, yeah. yep, yep. No, yep. it was like a good relationship then. Once once it became just like I would say, how do you say, uh, seamless? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was it was like the perfect yep, thing. Yep, yep, it was. It was great. It was great. It was great. I I I would be sad thinking about that shit, but yeah. I just feel like the I feel like the upper management and the owners like really got to a place where they just didn't really care enough about the store. And like once the management and owners, once Sean don't give a fuck, once Luke don't give a fuck. It's like Russo always gave a fuck, but like once Sean and Luke don't give a fuck, it's like how you expect your management to like care about this shit? You know what I mean? Like yeah. they start cutting down the buy money every week now. You, it got to a point where they had a, you guys had a thousand dollars a day. Like when Kia was running the shit, she had a thousand dollars a day to buy. And it's like, yeah. why is the store not making no money? Because I don't have any money to buy anything people want, sir. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. not one shoe comes in and you're cooked. Yeah, Literally. exactly, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like twelve oh ones, money's gone. I remember like leaving shit there. And I'm like, that's gonna take me three days to get paid. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, Fuck. no, yeah, I remember when. But out of time, I remember. I, even when district opened up, mm. we would go across the street and would be like, "How much you spend today? How much you?" And we would literally split the market. It was like, "Oh, we spend twenty five. Oh, we spend twenty five. Oh, perfect. This yeah, is a beautiful. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. But then after everybody left, it was just kind of like, "All right." Yeah. 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 Uh, good times. Rough times. Good times. Yeah. Yeah. Good, yeah. good, good times. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it was just like knowing, obviously, just understanding the reseller and that's one thing i think we did really well when yeah. we were there it was like we understood he's gonna make his money let us make our money yeah and exactly all- yep 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 yeah it's a give and take yeah, yeah and it worked well for a long time yeah, yeah. good times it was just like a hub 
Yeah. yeah. Facts. It was a meeting point. Yeah. When you were a uh, question, when you were um, obviously doing the Supreme, what was the best uh, drop that you were just like, damn, like not not even just money wise, like you were like, oh, today was a good day, like the best collab or whatever, just drop in general. A CDG. Uh, box logo, the crinkle box logo, the one that was like that, yeah. that had like the logo looked like it had been crushed, yeah. and it was yeah. like screen printed on the on the logo on the hoodie. Remember? Yeah. And everybody was talking shit because it was screen printed on the hoodie because nobody wanted a screen printed hoodie; they wanted embroidery, embroidery right? right? But um, do you remember what, what was that Asian dude with the big big S five eighty Mercedes, the rich ass a B was it B J B J? There was this Asian dude B J. Pause, Ao. Um, <laughs> and this Asian dude, BJ, uh, who was a big Supreme buyer, would come up to the store, and I swear he had unlimited money that day, and they had so many. That was like when production really started getting heavy, yeah. and everybody got to get one sweat, one hoodie, one one T-shirt, and he was buying a hoodie and T-shirt combo for a thousand dollars, and we just kept sending bodies in and sending yeah. bodies in and sending bodies in, and, send, and I just remember thinking like. Wow, like I'm just this shit is money. Just, <laughs> it's just yo, dead ass. I mean, like yeah. we and, and like at the time, the security guard that was working there, we had a crazy in with the guard that was working there, right? And like he was a nice guy, but he was a dopehead. You know what I'm saying? Like so, he wanted the good shit from the Heights, where from my block where I lived at Washington Heights on 177. He wanted me to bring him work from up there in exchange for like finessing the line. So I had a whole thing going on with the security guard for a long time. <laughs> I would bring him dog food. He would let me get bodies on the line, like sneaking on the line. So now my bodies, I get to pay them less because this is back when we were camping camping i'm talking about motherfuckers that supreme on monday tuesday like yeah. you know what i mean to like solidify them first spots but you know if you wanted more product you gotta have bodies and like to pay a body to really be there for two three days sometimes cuts your market you know what i'm saying yeah. so once we got really good with the guard we was able to get the bodies and just pull up in the morning 9 a.m and i'm gonna put you in i had such a racket going on i would go around the corner because the line would go around the corner yeah. the night before like around two corners the line would be on like uh what is that my, not my um Behind Supreme, whatever, where Elizabeth? Huff is at, right? Crosby. Oh, Crosby, The line yeah. would be on Crosby, you know what I'm saying? So I would go around the back to the line of Crosby and find, like, the Asians, like, with the CDG on that look like they got money. And I'm like, yo, my man's is up in the front, but he's going home. He's, he's, he's tapping out. Security said I could let you get this spot, but it's going to cost you 200 my man. And I would get the 200 and I'd bring the guy up to the front and be like, yo... Papa, he's taking, you know, Julio's spot. And then the guard would be like, all right, but no more bullshit after this. Like, yeah, just yeah, yeah. take the front, you know what I mean? And I'll break him off a little bread, keep the bread. And then come morning time, that same person gets skipped by 400 people and sitting there looking at me like, who oh, I paid you? I'm like, yeah, I put you in the right spot. I don't want that. You got to move after that. You got to move on your own. Yeah, yeah but, facts. Yeah, Supreme was a, oh, it was a good yeah. loop. Supreme was, we was printing money out of there for a long time. Yeah. And the only hindrance was that, like, they didn't really have a lot of products sometimes. Yeah. Like, I remember that, um... Remember that denim jacket they did that just says Supreme USA? The and it was the yeah, pink right, one. They have yeah. one medium. They yeah. have one jacket in the store. You know what I mean? And like that kind of thing happened often. Like there'd be one thing and like, well, we got one today. Yeah. You know, and that shit barely happens now. Sometimes it happens, but even when it happens, it doesn't matter anymore. Like there'll be, there was five of that knotted beanie yeah. that last week. There was five of the yeah. multicolor one in Soho, right? Yeah. And like whatever, the, the hat's still $100 on StockX. It doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but. It was cool, man. It was cool back then. One thing I noticed out here is that Thursday the things will sell out, but then next week it's restocked. Yeah, that's everywhere. Too. Yeah, that, they're heavy Because that the happened with, yeah. with these jeans. Um, they were out by 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. at the Hollywood store. Yeah. And then my homie just went that last week. He's like, bro, they have one sitting. Like, I haven't even been to the, to the yeah. Hollywood store. Crazy, it's funny nice. enough. Yeah. yeah. I haven't, yeah and they closed it. the old one, right, completely? Yeah, yeah the yeah. old one's gone. Yeah. yeah. Like, even th but it's funny because like that block, just the last time I went there, we went for the Super Bowl, and it just looked, Dead without Prem. You gotta sit with the same thing with Lafayette and, yeah, and Soho. Same yeah. thing with Lafayette. Lafayette's done now that Prem isn't there. Like, it's funny over there. Yeah. They, they haven't even been able to sublet the space. You yeah. know what I mean? Even though the space is huge now, because, yeah. you know, they constructed that into one store. They took over the store on Crosby side. Oh, that sure. was the original plan. Bowery... Bowery was happenstance. They were yeah. supposed to be in Bowery for one season while Lafayette was getting remodeled, yeah. and everybody just loved Bowery so much that they wound up staying. But Supreme still owns the holds the lease to the space on Lafayette. Mm. Fuck. Uh, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, have you heard any Supreme rumors about new stores? Not recently. So I heard they're doing a flagship in New York soon. Like a new one? Yeah, like another store uh, in New York. In City. New York. Yeah, like Where a Fifth Ave, Madison type uh -huh. thing. Like you know what I mean? Something like that. 
Yeah. And that's when it's really going to be over. Yeah, over, I think, I think yeah, that's yeah, going to be like so. the absolute final nail in the coffin for it. Fuck. You know, don't get me wrong. I think like at a retail level, that store is going to do great for years and years oh, to come. Yeah, of course. You know what I mean? Like yeah. they, they are going to have to manage their production quantities because they're just getting out of hand with a lot of shit. But like on a retail level, that store will be great for a long time. And I, I it's still going to hold the space yeah. in my heart. You know what I mean? But like Supreme's fucking over. No, I always tell people on the resale level, Supreme's cooked. But like on yeah. the retail level, the fact that I can go in and get stuff that I want because they still make great shit. They yeah. do. Yeah. They, they look at those pants. Yeah. There was a bunch of stuff this season that was great shit. There's a bunch of shit that's completely fucking terrible though. Yeah. Like those, <laughs> those those jean sweats. The what the the bless was it bless? Yeah. Who the fuck wants that? Who <laughs> want, who wanted that shit? Like yeah. I don't know who Supreme's. I feel like I don't know who Supreme's customer is anymore because y'all have to know, right? Yeah. Y'all have yeah. to know, right? Supreme, you guys have to know who your customer is, right? Your customer wanted sweat jeans, or even that same week, your customer wanted tearaway jeans. Yeah. Like what the fuck <laughs> is that shit, bro? Some of it is so fucking bad, bro. Yeah. That it's like what. What the fuck? Yeah. It makes me not want the shit that's good because some of it is so bad. Yeah. You know, and like the quality is still good. It's still for the most part good shit, but uh, it'd be hard, yeah. man. On the retail side, it's gonna be hard for me to justify yeah. that shit. I got so yeah. much of that shit I can't sell for nothing no more, bro. I went to OG Ma like a month ago with a yeah. bin of like just accessories and shit that weren't even things I have to say. It's just shit I had for myself because I've been collecting this shit also for the past decade and a half. You know what I'm saying? And I got there and she said, Poppy, Poppy, please don't even open it. She didn't even want to see it. I'm like, I got some cool old she's like, I Jeez, no, I know, bro. but Poppy, please. I'm like, I'd like you could just I'd be pay me next month because like that was that was the loop for a long time too. Like, I right, just take it, oh, just take it, mama, take it. Don't worry, I'll be back. Right, you good? Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, you know, yeah, your thanks. money good with me, baby. Like, yeah. she didn't even want to look at it. Like, please don't even open the bone. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. just, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> fuck. It's that's where we are with it. Fuck. Yeah. It went from you remember. And after that is when I said I gotta go to God's soul. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Facts. You fuck. remember? I heard a lot of stories of it from like Nelson Dimas. Mm -hmm. How was it? Chasing cars to find out what park they were doing. Bro, that was some of the wildest shit I've ever done in my life. <laughs> in my life, bro. I remember this one time specifically, right? It was at um Cause Park on Forsyth with the the Cause basketball yeah. court, right? Yeah. Bro, me and me and TMB, right, Chris. Yo, how we didn't go to jail for the way? How we didn't get arrested, pulled over, a ticket, and that? Yo, bro. We were fucking wilding through the streets of New York City, bro. I remember hitting, there's like, there's, there's, Forsyth is a one way anyway, yeah. right? And then there's like a row of parked cars. And then there's that like space where like it's, you know, white paint, like nothing. And then there's the bike lane. We were going like 70 down the bike lane, bro. <laughs> <laughs> down the bike lane on Forsyth, bro. It was such crazy times yeah. chasing those yeah. parks, bro. There would be a riot in the park every weekend, you know? Yeah. And the shit that we did to get that information was also horribly criminal and blatantly wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, niggas fire. Followed security guards to their houses. People would follow guards home at the end of their shift so that they knew where the guard lived, so they knew where to start following them Thursday morning. So Thursday morning, 6 a.m., we sitting in front of a security guard's house. He doesn't know we there. We're yeah. stalking. We're stalking. That's what it is. I'm sorry. You know what I mean? That's what it is. We're stalking security guards. You know what I'm saying? Like I remember it wasn't me, but I remember somebody took a cell phone, like I had a whole phone, and made sure it was charged on low battery mode, and threw it in a, in a guard's car, like under the floor, so that they could follow him just for the next day. Like he gave up a whole cell phone for the release, you know what I mean? <laughs> oh, just so they could find my phone yo, and follow the guard, awesome. you know what I mean? Yeah, and yeah. then it got to the point where we were just paying guards to share locations, yeah, yeah. you know. And then it got to the point because of that that Supreme as a company and the security guards as a company started having two separate teams that would go out to two different parks, and even the teams didn't know which one was going to be the real location. You know what wow. I mean? It was only Barlow and and um and the other homie, yeah. like only the two head guys knew the locations. Period. You know what yeah. I mean? Like the shit we would do to to yo bro. Insane, and Supreme bro. didn't have permits to be at any of these parks. It was yeah. just like real. It was real fucking crazy, bro. Yeah. That, those were some of the wildest times ever chasing those parks. I remember one day it got shut down at a park on the Upper East Side, and they decided to run to the Bronx to go do it. Yeah. And they were motherfuckers on the FDR with bicycles, <laughs> bicycles, <laughs> city bikes, and because like everybody was on a bike back then. Yeah. Like Thursdays, yeah. like you on a bike because you could just move around the city so much faster. You know yeah. what I mean? And yo, it was crazy, man. Those were some wild fucking times chasing the parks. Yeah, I remember Nelson telling me a story. I, get, I think that Bronx one. And mm -hmm. he's like, when I got there, he's like, I thought I was good. Then Mars pulled up with a van and like 20 bodies came out of the van. <laughs> Bro, it used to be, yo, and I, it was crazy because back then, like, yo, if I was number 20, I would be so pissed off. Like, fuck. Like, if I wasn't top five, I'd feel like unaccomplished. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And like, then to think of that, then like when they started implementing that registration system and how rough that was, yeah. it was like, yo, if I'm number top five. Hundred, I'm good. Like you know, yeah, yeah. and now it's whatever. But it, yeah, it, it was fucking crazy. Yeah. How was it when that? I remember when that registration thing. But like, obviously, I knew for us because we just wanted it for our personal. This is mm -hmm. before we got cool with Lou. 
Because Louis was just like, hey, bro, can you just get one of these? And be like, bet, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. But how was it when the registration thing happened? It was terrible, man. Everybody was fucking, uh, we all looked like, you know, little children that you took our lollipops away from, man. It was sad, bro. <laughs> yeah. We were sad when that registration shit, for, yeah. especially the first couple months, because, like, the registration happened. It was, it was very difficult even being cool with, like, some of the, the people in the office and being cool with the people in the store. It was very difficult to get any love shown at that point, because it was like, yeah, like, you know, the, the city's ready to, like, fucking find Supreme for, like, doing these things. And, like, it was it was such a shit show. And it was so... It was, they, the, the store looked at it as such disrespect that they had to even go that far. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, motherfuckers really can't, like, figure it out. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, we're, we're trying to do the random locations and this. And y'all just fuck everything up. Y'all come and fuck everything up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And... So it was really hard at first because, like, they kind of just hated us for having to have implemented that because that was the last thing they wanted to do was implement a registration. They were always very against that because Supreme always had this air of, like, coolness and I don't give a fuckness and, like, anti establishment ness yeah, So a registration was very establishment. It was very footlocker. It was very, like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, very raffle to enter type shit. You know what I mean? So Supreme hated that shit at first and they hated us for having to implement it, you know? Yeah. And very specifically in New York City because did that, Park shit ever even happened in never, LA? No, no. Never. that's what I'm saying. Here, here it was uh, they got it was first come first serve, and I'm telling you, I, I you know Jackie, yeah, same thing. I would hit her up. She was always like top five over here, and I'll be like, hey, I need this, and she'd be like, bet easy. I'm not. And the thing is, she was lining up for herself, which was like, even crazy. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. For, yep, yep. <laughs> for her to yeah, be for top, little Jackie yeah, to be yeah, top five, yeah, yeah, crazy, just, yeah. it's yeah. funny. Everybody just kind of respects lines everywhere else for the most part. Like, yeah, I, if, York, if you were yeah. here, you're here. In New York, it's like fucked up. That's why it was like a culture <laughs> shock when I got there and all the shit was going on. I'm like, over here, I was just like, right. I was, and I remember the time in New York when it started like shifting like that because for a while there was a general respect. Like people would, I, like I, I remember when I first started reselling, it was like, I bet we gonna get there, stay for a little while, leave our chairs, go home, come back and like yo it's my chair fam i'm here you yeah. know what i mean yeah. and it would just kind of work but then too many people that weren't regular started doing that and it was like nah your chair doesn't work our chair works over yeah. here. you know what i'm saying like yeah. your chair could work back there your chair doesn't work over here you yeah. know what i mean yeah. and like and then as like a show of resistance it was like all right well fuck it chairs don't work at all no more now yeah. you know what i mean and then like it it, it was really it's always been like if if you that person or not in New York, you know what I yeah. mean. It's really been like if you that person or not, or if you move well enough. Like, cause I've seen people that weren't like part of the clique or part of the gang that like got in sometimes. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they moved right and or paid the right person, you know what I mean. So it's weird. Yeah, yeah. What, cause, oh, yeah. What year did you think that you're like, yo, this reselling shit is like getting kind of out of hand? Like, as far as like, there's so many people here trying to resell shit and trying to get involved. Like, what year do you think that was for you where you were like, yo, like, this shit's, like, getting crazy? You know what? In New York, it's always been a little fucking rough, to be honest with yeah. you. You know what I'm saying? Like, in New York, it's always been a little rough. Because, like, I started really getting into reselling sneakers heavy. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, the the first red phone posits. Remember those metallic red phone yeah. posits? That's when I, because, like, I grew up in New York City. I was born in, like, Mount Sinai. I grew up in New York City. But then I went to Westchester. I moved to Westchester, right? And I became an assistant manager of Foot Action at the Gallery and Mall right up there and like I was doing my little reselling ones and twos with like my regular customers there I would give people sneakers early like without the box like my regulars like yo I bet psh, yeah. you know give me a hundred dollars and then you got to come in on Saturday and pay for them and take your box you know what I mean yeah. um, that, wow. that's how I was doing it when I used to work for that shit yeah that's how I was doing it when I used to work for that shit that's how I fake started reselling you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying yeah, yeah. and I would do that to two or three people and then I paid for my pair and it was just about my pair at first you know what I'm saying and then I think I wound up getting fired I got fired from Foot Action when Foot Locker bought Foot Action because I was working Foot action before it was owned by Foot Locker, yeah. right? Like, they did auditing and saw, like, he was wilding. <laughs> <laughs> White Air Force Ones and Tim's, boy, I kept fresh or I just damaged them out. Like, yeah. I, if I go out with the Tim's, somebody scuffed them, I'm eh, damaged, mismatched, throw them in the box, or I would push it as damaged, and, like, because the damaged shit would never go back to Foot Locker. Like, the damaged shit would go to, like, this company that bought the damaged shit. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I would just be stealing from the damaged shit. Like, putting the stuff I stole, I'd put it in as the damaged thing, yeah, yeah, and yeah. then, like, you know, they'd get it and be like, oh, it's short something but it never came back to me i don't know yeah. you know but eventually whatever it came it caught up got fired yeah. but i was on unemployment so it was like oh, i'm gonna pimp this unemployment for six months and i'll just keep reselling and then i started going down and and from that first time i went to Foot Locker, that was that was when they did midnight releases on 34th street so like i remember going down to Foot Locker for the for the chrome not the chrome but like the metallic chrome phone posits right and they would do a two per 
person. And I remember I got there like 9 p.m. And it was like, I was like number 100, bro. I was like, I ain't know nobody down there. I'm like, damn. You know what I'm saying? So it was already crazy then. And yeah. you know, there was already 200 people lined up for two a pair. And this, this was reselling. Everybody yeah. was getting two pairs because niggas were selling them, you know? Yeah. And back then it was reselling on Craigslist. I used to resell shit on Craigslist mainly yeah. back then. Like I'd post on my personal Instagram, but that was limited, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I was, po yo, size 12, meet up, you know, like buying fucking Kith salmon toes and shit and like reselling yeah. them like <laughs> on Craigslist. I'm t- yeah. I was a Craigslist reseller to start, like, you know? Yeah. Um, but it really, really started feeling crazy. I think Yeezys. Yeah. I think yeah. Yeezys is what like really made it like, nah, it's Jennifer and her mom here reselling. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because before <laughs> it, it was the, the, the crowd, the New York City reseller crowd has always been a tough crowd because I think early on, like, real hood dudes and street dudes realized, oh, wait, I can go make a quick legal buck down here. You know what I mean? Instead yeah. of trapping up top, like, whatever, yeah. I'm going to go down here. So it's always, it was always a rougher crowd of people. It wasn't necessarily a sneaker person that was reselling in New York City. It was like, Dope boys and hustlers, yeah. like lower level dope boys and hustlers, but like you know what I mean. It was, it, was, yeah. it was hood niggas that just wanted to make some free money to get a job, like yeah. you know what I mean. Like my man's got three teardrops and like you know what I mean. Like yeah. it does nothing but smoke weed and drink all day. Like he ain't getting a job, like you know what I mean. And he's twenty one, so he's young and active, but so he's coming down here. So it's always been a rougher side. But I started seeing like just the regular ass inline, you know, Jennifer and her moms yeah. for Yeezys. I think that's what really started. Like I started noticing that Adidas and Yeezys. I think it brought out like a whole different genre and culture of people into yeah. reselling you know what i mean because like the adidas easy shit was really a more refined fashion kind of sneaker you know what yeah, i mean right. and like jordans weren't really like people wear jordans in fashion you can be fashionable with a pair of jordans certainly you know what i mean yeah. but the fashion fashion people used to really wear fashion sneakers back then your prada's balenciaga blah, 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 all these designer shit you know what i mean so like jordan's still kind of people were paying crazy money for jordans to wear them to just be you know streetwear fly yeah. you know what i mean yeezy's brought it in into like a different brought sneakers into like a different area almost you know what i mean of like fashion fly yeah and that that kind of was like when i felt like damn it's everybody in Amalva out here for real for real that and then like you know the the, the evolution of stock x you yeah. know what i mean and these apps like yep. it's just is what it that makes everybody a resell so like whatever if tom is at his desk job working at t-mobile or whatever and like he enters a draw and hits the raffle online great for him and then he can just turn around and sell it for 30 40 dollars it doesn't matter to him because he didn't have to put in that pain you know yeah. what i'm saying yes. um and, and and all that sort of made everybody a reseller. You yeah. know what I mean? That's why like, you were talking to me about, like, people quitting reselling. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> people quitting reselling. And it's like, I'm never going to quit reselling ever. You know what I mean? Yeah. Especially because, like, I'm, I've never been pigeonholed into thinking that the only thing that can sell is sneakers. Like, one of the biggest licks of my life was Kylie Lip Kits. Like, right. I had a homeboy bought wow. the Kylie Lip Kits site. Yeah. When they first uh, her first lip kit thing, my girlfriend wanted one the first lip kit, right? And yeah. she was like, "This release is at 11. She sent me the lick. She was like, "I want this, please. Make sure you get this for me." I got you. It was fucking lipstick, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Sure. And like, I set an alarm for 10:58, and at 11 I went on, and that shit sold out like a sneaker. And I was like, "Wow!" And she was like, "Pissed that I didn't yeah. get it a lipstick, right?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she sent me a lick. She was like, "Look, people are selling them on eBay, and like it was like an 80 dollar lip kit, and it was like." 250 on eBay. I'm like, I'm not buying that shit for you. 250. You kiss my ass. But um, then <laughs> Kylie announced like, oh, they're gonna restock it. And then like, I happened to be with one of my like bot homeboys, right? Yeah. And he was like, this is a Shopify. He was like, I, I can run bots for this, you know. He's like, and like we looked into it a little bit more. Started like paying attention to the eBay numbers and the, the sales and shit. Yeah. And we bought it like a thousand lip kits or something, Jesus. something like that. Maybe a thousand is an exaggeration, but it might have been like 380 lip kits or something like that. Yeah, you know, really you know they did an article on Women's Day magazine. Like they interviewed me for Women's Day magazine because of the lip kits. And yeah. like I sold, oh, I was selling those lip kits at a buck twenty five. Like it was water yeah. industry. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like. I think reselling will always be a thing. There's always things yeah. that somebody's going to be willing to make a dollar over on. You know what I mean? It's just about being able to get it and being able to sell it. But being able to get it and being able to sell it, being able to sell it is easy nowadays with all these apps. Being able to get it is just a crapshoot. So, like, there's never, ever going to be a reason to stop reselling. Yeah. It just changes, you know? Yeah. It's just it, adjusting yeah. because one yeah. thing you guys did really well pandi- when the pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. And you guys started the doing the raffles. Yeah. That's yeah, raffles changed guys- my life. <laughs> yeah. Raffles changed my life, boy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh my god! I live in a nice house now. Like I live in a nice place now. Like yeah. I, I was on one seventy seventh to Amsterdam when the raffle yeah. started in the yeah. NYCHA building. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Living with my girlfriend and her mother. Like you know what I mean? And now like I have my own place and it's nice. It's beautiful. Yeah. The ladies come check it out. But, um, <laughs> like, yo, nah, but it's it, the, the, it. 
people won't believe the money we made raffling. Like, and I don't even like saying it, but like, it is all gone. But, um, <laughs> but like, yo, the FYI. raffles were fucking. And I remember I didn't even want to do it because it was like the pandemic hit. It was right around the time when people was doing like that weird stop sign shit, that octagon. Like, you yeah. said, like, it was just such a blatant fucking pyramid scheme. Yeah. But like, yeah. like, it was just, it's absolutely the definition of a pyramid scheme. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, that was happening. And that's like when people first started realizing that was bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, and it just, it felt scammy to me, you know what I mean? But, like, the first people I saw ever raffling were, like, bottle girls. Like, the New York City bottle chicks, like, these star tenders and dream, all the girls that worked at the club with the big asses and beautiful, beautiful, lovely women, all those women. Yeah. They was the ones raffling, but for cash, because now the clubs were closed down, so they're not making no money there. So they now, they on Instagram yeah. with little skanky shit on, you know what I mean? And, of course, I love looking at skanky shit on Instagram. It's my favorite pastime. So I'm on there. <laughs> And I'm, looking, and I'm looking and like, you know, it was like, yeah, send $20, win 100 And like these girls were doing it. And I was like, send my little $20, $30. I won once. It was cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then um, and then TMB, fucking Briss. Man, I love that kid forever and ever, yeah. bro. Briss was like, yo, we should do a raffle. And I'm just like, me and you, nigga? Like, nobody like, trusts you. Like, everybody, nobody, <laughs> no, nobody's going to, like, Briss, you. And then he was like, nah, do it with Manny. Right, what's on your feet? My partner, my brother. I love that man. What's on your feet? I, I'm a, I'm offended that I haven't brought up his name in the first hour. I love Manny. He's a fucking <laughs> great human being, right? Um, and and Manny. So Chris asked Manny, and Manny said the same thing. It was like, sure, if Dre do, does it, I'll give it a try. And like the, at first, it was me and Chris on one side, and then Manny on the other. Right? It wasn't even Manny on. It was fucking Scooter Love on yeah. the other. Right? Oh, sure. And we got into it with Scooter over yeah. that shit because he wanted to get paid more than what we were paying him per night, which he was definitely worth. Scooter's a fucking character and a half. Like yeah. you just want to tune in to Scooter talking shit. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Scooter's such a personable person. He's this yeah. big, huge ghetto nigga that's <laughs> ah, talking. And he has drama hour. Drama and Scooter hour loves that good. shit. <laughs> right? That's good. And okay. it was like, yo, Scooter abandoned us halfway through the raffle. And then went live on his own and was like, fuck that, I'm not joining the raffle back unless they send me 450 or some shit like that. <laughs> and I remember me and Manny being like, on live. Like, like I, mean, I remember me and Manny being like, what the fuck? And I was like, I'm not paying that nigga that. Like, no way. Especially the way the way he was trying to do it. Like, yeah, bullying me now. Fuck that. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, so um, so then it was like, yo, Manny, you gotta come on with me. So then Manny came on with me. And it just, yo, from day one, it just worked. And I mean, height of pandemic, we were doing. Bro, we would stop because it was like, yo, like, all right, it's getting dangerous. Like, the amount yeah. of money that we, like, like I, we would be so scared that they would, like, clip the cash app and, like, hold the money. Because, like, we'd run the cash app into these ridiculous numbers every night. And, like, it, it we were paying people to use their cash apps. Bro. I was giving people $500 yeah. a night to use their cash app. So I had, like, a whole yeah. network of my family and Manny's family that, like, cool. Is you're not, like, people would be like, yo, what's up? Can you use me twice this week? And we'd always try to be like, man, <laughs> super cautious about it. Like, yeah. chill, because we don't want to blow up a cash app. And every once in a while, one would get clipped. They don't hold the funds, but, like, the cash app's over. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, yeah. And, bro, we used to run raffles till 3, 4 in the morning. I remember one time we toyed with the idea of doing, like, a 24-hour marathon raffle, bro. What the <laughs> like, movie? That's good. Uh, that would have been a movie. Uh, but the thing about these raffles that, for me, being home during the pandemic was it was entertainment. Yeah, it's cool. So and were, we did. We tried to do that on purpose because me and Manny, like, we argue a lot in general. Like, me and Manny are not the same type of person. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. we don't see eye to eye, like, on a lot of shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, we argue a lot on person and get on each other's nerves a bit. So it would be, at first, it was like we'd be arguing I'm like serious and then like I realized like the viewership went up and people are like tuning in to us arguing because like it's like a sitcom for them you yeah, know what I mean yeah, yeah. so then we start playing it up even more because my idea was just like well if I could have somebody just sitting on here watching for two hours then maybe they'll play a slot and if they win then now we got them you know yeah. what I'm saying and like we never did no funny shit with the raffle we never did no scam shit everybody always got their product you know yeah. what I'm saying like yeah. yeah we made money on it obviously you know what I mean but and, and we still raffle to this day you know yeah. what I mean it's slow it's slow it's slow <laughs> you know it's getting back to slow now which i enjoy because yeah. it's fucking but at the end of the day we go like three hours a night three nights a week now and i'm at home on instagram live it's really not that much work you know what i mean yeah. but um the raffles were great man the raffles were fucking Bro, great. i remember you guys came when we first um back opened mm -hmm. and it was you and manny uh then crack pulled up then scooter and then you guys just were like oh i did this i did that that was a crazy time and then i remember scooter coming with his new watch and everything yeah. and i was just like Bro. <laughs> i was just there just Bro. like Bought my watch off of raffles. That's for damn sure. <laughs> yo, yo, bro, the raffles was different, man. Them shits was that shit. 
that shit deserves like a little docu series of its but own that was one like day, bro. The the same thing, the the hustle mentality. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. we're locked up in, yeah. inside the crib. Let me make yep. some bread. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> and it worked, man. It worked, man. Yeah. Shout out to the raffle. Shout out to the fucking people, the followers, the people that played. And it's funny because like the real players were just degenerate gamblers. They're not even like sneaker people. <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. I, I, like I've met like I'm yeah, in yeah. LA right now. I'm staying in my boy's crib. Like he let us borrow his crib. And then they got met because of the raffle. Like I've met some of my best friends because of this raffle. Funny enough, bro. I yeah. met Fresh because of the raffle. <laughs> I love you, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah, shout out Fresh NYC, baby. <laughs> yo. Bro, I remember anything. PS5s came out. Most yo, of bro, them. we would do it. And yo, bro, oh my God, the PS5 raffles, bro. Oh, yeah. <sighs> The way people were going crazy off PS5s, bro, I had one dude, Heck, Hex tattooing, bro. This one guy never played for nothing other than Ben. But I think that guy won 12 PS5s off us, bro. He was just spending him, sending. Yo, bro, some of the. We used to do these mystery rounds, right? Like, where it was like $10 a slot. We leave it open for a half hour, right? So you don't know what you're getting. It's just however many slots we get, the better that mystery pack yeah. is. You wow. know what I mean? And like, yeah, it yeah. turned into like a dick measuring contest with these niggas. Like, yo, it was like, we had guys literally. Sending a thousand dollars a pop, let me get a hundred slots. Yeah, let me get a hundred slots, and then they start competing against each other. They don't even know what they're winning, and we made sure <laughs> that's the best part. But, oh like, part, part of the reason it worked so well is because we made sure the, the mystery prize, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It, all again, all depending on how much, but like, yo, if we had a mystery round that we pulled in three, four grand off of, we're gonna give you a $2,500 sneaker yeah. and then a bunch of miscellaneous Supreme Dirt, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean, like, bullshit that we can't because every person in the world that sells a mystery box of any sort is giving you stuff that they can't really sell. Yeah. That's just that's first and foremost, right? That's, like, yeah. it's that's part of it, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, you get a deal on something, and like, ah, maybe like the sneaker con kid, like, I thought that was pretty genius everybody was like talking wild shit about him but he, i didn't think he was doing anything like wrong like it's a mystery box this is yeah. what the fuck you know what i mean some of his shit was a little too shitty and the fact that it was only one thing in that item that yeah. that's what made it like not work but our mystery yeah. packs like i'd make sure you get something good in there you know what i mean and like if you was a guy if somebody won that spent fifteen hundred dollars i'll make sure you get something even better in there because like he's you got to make your money back off yeah. that the mystery pack has to at least be worth that value and we always made sure it would be but it was crazy. It was crazy, bro. Nah. It was crazy. Some of the money, yo. And we 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 have people. I, I have people to this day that's like, yo, bro. Like some of the, our biggest players don't even like want to like unfollowed me. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, some of our biggest like players that spent the most money ever on a raffle yeah. unfollowed me. Bruh. Like, bro, like I love you. I can't even like. I just my wife is gonna shoot me. Like, yeah. I, I can't do this no more. <laughs> bro, I remember just. Um, I, it was I, so I, crazy. I think I played once or twice here mm. and there. Never won, but <laughs> I remember it was Sorry. like. But it was because it was so funny. Like, yeah. bro, I was yeah, just. Yeah, I, don't yeah. know if, I was at home before no. Like, we didn't have a job at that point. Yeah. I was just like, I was like, bro, this is hilarious. Yo, like, yeah, man, I loved it, man. I was such a great yeah. time. It's still, it's still a good time, man. Yeah. I don't know. I'm still, I'm, we, we still hanging on by a thread, man. I don't know. Join in, tune into the raffle, man. Play a slot, man. It ain't no <laughs> bullshit. You can win some shit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It'd be fun. But it's just like it's 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 not the same thing anymore because like it's not as many people playing. It's not as many yeah. people entering. So like, I, I need that interaction to stay. You know what I mean? Like, cause yeah. I'm I'm home alone. Like yeah. at the end of the day, Manny's on the other side, but he's a fucking asshole. Fuck man, hate that guy. <laughs> um, it's, it's just you know it turns out being a little blah at the end of the day nowadays you know but yeah. we still try to like make it fun and the spice it up everybody and was home too yeah, yeah, yeah everybody was home true. everybody's home like come on man we need pandemic part duh quick yeah. besides <laughs> that like what's something else that i guess you're doing now to like get out there more or like to kind of like keep not enough. yourself going that's for certain like yeah. not enough first, <laughs> and foremost, first and foremost absolutely not enough but like nowadays i'm really trying to like focus my mind on like <sighs> getting myself back out there like that's yeah. why i came to complex con that's why i'm like in my head at least committing to like going to more sneaker shows etc yeah. just because like i really don't do that kind of stuff very often I, I haven't done a lot of it ever right but every time i do do it i get so much love like even like going to complex con it's like you know fucking i see you every it's like oh these people still know me and remember me and like they yeah. fuck with me but i don't know that because i'm never anywhere that i see them like that you know what yeah, i mean yeah. so like i want to start i'm trying to start getting myself out and i'm gonna I'm start doing some merch man i'm doing some soul street merch that's coming out soon i got the little ss you know what i'm saying Woo. yeah little double s logo right there little varsity kind of ee rip you know it is what it is um yeah. you know um <laughs> 
and I'm doing plain sweatsuits, you know, with the little the little SS on the, the the chest and on the pants, and it's got a little cute little Rolex um, patch sleeve on the watch. Um, they nice sweatsuits. I'm dropping them in like a week or two. You know what I mean? Buy some sweatsuits. I'm gonna try to push the merch thing a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Partly because of y'all, man. Because the syndicate merch is so nice. Like you're very creative with it. I really like seeing the syndicate merch. You know what I'm saying? And the fact that I kept watching you do more syndicate merch, I'm like the merch got to be at least paying for itself because it yeah. keeps doing more and more. Unless you're digging yourself into a crazy hole, which I hope you're not. <laughs> yeah, friend, I, I love you as a person. <laughs> <laughs> well, fuck, fuck. Who knows nowadays? <laughs> crazy. I don't know how much of that shit you got back there. But, <laughs> but, um, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm, I'm gonna start the Soul Street merch. I'm gonna yeah. start doing that shit. Easy. You know, I, I'm, I'm really, you know, I, I, I experimented doing a podcast. We had um the Camp Out podcast with me, and my man Scrams. We're doing it. Shout out Cheech. Shout out Scram. Shout out um my boy Ricardo and PM Life. Um, it was yeah. through no company through his like media company that he was trying oh, to set off, but. And we did like 30 something episodes And it was cool You know what I mean I enjoyed coming and talking shit Just like now Like I enjoy coming to talk shit And do this kind of stuff So I want to do more of this kind of stuff That the future of that podcast Is sort of up in the air right now I'm not sure what's going to happen If we're moving forward or not sure. But I'm exploring Doing some other ones possibly You know what I mean I, I really do want to get myself out there I want to continue living a life In sneakers You yeah. know what I mean To some degree Because I really do love this shit Like it's yeah. Sneakers and streetwear are my thing Like I love Like I'm always looking at this shit Looking at the new drops I, I really do enjoy this shit From the bottom of my heart so I would love to find new pathways in that moving forward right but at the same time like things are getting difficult in life like it ain't no funny shit out here like yeah. I'm fucked up right now yeah. like the yeah. bills are still getting paid like you know what I mean like yeah. rent's paid and you know but but yo it's bad out here you know what yeah. I'm saying things are looking bad every month I'm looking at numbers and it's just like ah it just keeps getting worse and worse yeah. so I don't know man I might have to pivot into something else you know if anybody guys any fucking million dollar opportunities you know yeah, fucking, at this point ten thousand dollar opportunities but fucking <laughs> you know like I, so I don't know what the because it's yeah. hard for me, man. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a reseller, full time reseller for the past decade, basically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't yeah. got a resume I can lean back on. I dropped out of high school. I don't got no education, even though I am a smart person. Like yeah. I know that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I'm 100%. a very handy person, smart person. I can figure shit out. I, like I know what I'm doing in damn near every respect. Put me in the middle of something, I'll figure it out and get it done. Other than maybe heart surgery. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> so uh, I'm, I'm not too worried. Every year of my life, you know, for the most part, is like I be thinking about it. And it's like old me would smack the shit out of me for like complaining about the problems I have now you know yeah. what I'm saying like I'm broke now but like I used to really be broke you know what I'm saying like yeah. I remember really being broke like I, I lived in my car for years you yeah. know what I mean like my I got into my baby my first baby mother shout out to her I have four kids with her beautiful woman Nicola I love her forever she red does a hell of a job raising my children um like I remember like You know I would get into Like fights with her She catch me cheating Kick me out I was like in the car Like I, I was sleeping In my car With no insurance No registration Like you know what I mean Back in the day On banana diets Because bananas Was like the cheapest shit That like could fill me up You yeah. know what I mean A dollar fifty You get a bunch of bananas That'll fill you up at night Like yeah. so I've been fucked up You know what yeah. I mean Thankfully I've never been Like on the street On the street Really homeless And like you know I've never exploited Absolutely every resource You know what I mean I haven't been that Down to my last But I've been close to it Before yeah. you know what I'm saying And like the way I'm fucked up now ain't the way I was fucked up before. So, like, that's a blessing in the first place, and I'm happy for that. Yeah. But I, I, I got to make sure I can't get nowhere near that anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I can't be nowhere near that anymore. Like, I yeah. have children now. Like, I have children that live under my roof now. My kids live with me now for the most part. You know what I mean? Like, I can't. I can't. So, moving forward, I don't know what's really next. You know what I mean? I'm trying to, like, explore a couple new things whilst also trying to keep my eyes open. But I don't even know, man. I don't even know. And it yeah. sucks. I hate not knowing at 40. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But it is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. With the yeah. way, like, the sneaker market is right now, what do you think they could do to make it better? I mean, they could open up Cynic in New York and have me run it for six years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nah, you know what it is, There's um, a business opportunity. <laughs> I think a lot of the reason the sneakers aren't doing so well right now, yeah. it, it's, it's a combination of a few things, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the economy is certainly part of it. I mean, people don't have the money to spend extra money for something nice. when, you know, there's no extra money around like that right now, nice. right? And it's sort of a self-correction because motherfuckers are going so crazy for so long. It's just, it's balance, yeah. you know? Yep. Um, so part of it is that. Part of it is the availability i think like the brands are just putting out too much product like you yeah. know what i mean and i get it from the brands from brand standpoint if i worked at nike yeah make more fucking retros let's go like you know what i mean like yeah. they don't need to care about our bottom dollar yeah. per se right um even though also there has to be a healthy balance with that because then your product becomes unwantable and now what you know what i mean yeah. so it, it's partly economy it's partly the fact that there's too much product out there um it's it's partly the fact that there are the stock x's and grailed and goats and all these online platforms Forms because it, again it makes everybody a reseller it gives everybody the chance to click a button and make a quick $30 when they already have a full-time job and they're not depending on that yeah. like 
you know, bring back more first come first serves, I would say, even though that also has its problems with safety and like, you know, this 2023 fucking pussy world we live in, you know what I mean? In a way, and I, it kind of is like yeah. everybody's just too soft for first comes nowadays. You know what I mean? It's just, oh my God, they're skipping and it's just caught like, it just, <laughs> <laughs> but like the, the skipping and the, having that first come and putting the product in the reseller's hand, kind of what kept the, the markets what it used to be. Because before, before the stock X, it didn't matter what the sneaker the cost or what was like if, if they only released it at two stores and we had 90% of it, then yeah. what the fuck? Like, you know what I mean? But now everybody can get it. Everybody can sell it. So that hurts it as well. You know what I mean? Um, those are the three biggest things, yeah. I think. I think the economy, the fact that everybody could be a reseller now, and the fact that there's just too much product too fast. Too much yeah. product too fast. Because there's still limited product, yeah. but it's another limited product every other fucking week. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm purpose. saying? There's another fucking number two to 200 every month. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, there's just too many products. There's too many, you know, thoughtless collaborations. There's yeah. too many... Uh, it's just even Supreme. Look at Supreme, right? Like, not for nothing. That brand. What what other brand, right? Puts out 40, 50 pieces a week for forty weeks a year. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? There, there, there's twenty five new items in seven colors each. Literally forty weeks a fucking year, bro. Yeah. Who does that shit? You know what I mean? And it's amazing that they were able to. I don't think anybody's ever going to be what Supreme was in the way that they were. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, other companies will make that kind of money, certainly. Yeah. But, like, to do what they did when they did it, I, I don't think will ever be duplicated. Right? But just, like, how, how can how can anybody keep up with that? Like, as yeah. much as you love a brand, how can a brand, how can a consumer keep up with that, bro? It's just too much yeah. shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I think, I think especially now, like, just the way everything is going. But I think it's good, like... I know you say you're not pivoting or you're not, you know, but I think it's good that you're pivoting into your own, like, personal brand, who you are. Because yeah, really I think a lot works. of people, whether you, I mm -hmm. think you'll see it more that a lot of people really look up to you. And you're going to see it more when, once you start You know, it's, it's, it's so more. funny about that shit because, like, I see it. I do see it, right? Yeah. Like, I, I go to these shows and I go to these events and it's like, yo, you're that fucking and guy like, oh, from, yeah. yo, bro, I had a kid the other day. Like, I, I went to Long Island to pull up to, like, one of the homie stores to sell him, like, some Supremes at, at retail, Air Force Ones, drove fucking two hours to Long Island to sell 20 pairs for $20 over. That's where we at now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> fuck. Um, and, like, some kid walks in there. He's like, yo, how do I know you? And I'm like, uh, he's like, wait. Aren't you the Supreme guy? I was like, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, me. Yeah. That's He's me. like, holy shit. He like lost his mind, takes yeah. a picture, puts on Instagram, like, yeah, hey, I fucking met a legend today. And I'm just like, bro, like, you don't, I'm not, come on, bro. Like, I'm not gonna <laughs> say I ain't shit, but like at the same time, fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so like, so I, I've still always been like yeah, yeah, yeah. sort of not accepting of that because I don't really like that's not what I've wanted for yeah. myself, for my yeah. life. Like, I don't want to be somebody that people look up to in a way. Like, that's not yeah. like I'm not nobody to look up to. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I live a great life on Instagram as everybody should yeah, right like yeah. i hate people that fucking post their downfalls and fucking bullshit like you're only getting <laughs> fucking a. you're only Yo. getting the good from me on instagram you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh you're such a great father yeah when i'm posting pictures of fucking making a kid's dinner like uh, the other time when i'm telling them they can't get 20 dollars and they slam in the door and fucking you know what i mean yeah, like, of course, of course. It, 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 it's it's always so double-sided so you only yeah. get the good so like of yeah, course yeah. but yeah. now i'm it's sort of forcibly now I'm like, all right, fuck it, I gotta do it. it. You know what I mean? I've yeah. had enough people tell me, like, yo, bro, why don't you have why haven't you done t shirts? Why haven't you done this? Why'd you done that? And I'm like, cause I don't want to. Like, cause I in my head I'm like, who's gonna buy that shit? You know what I'm saying? But fuck it, I'm gonna give it a shot this time nah. around. I'm gonna keep pushing it. And I I started it with the podcast thing that I did. I'm like, fuck it, I'm gonna try to put myself out there more. Now I'm gonna try to do it with the with the merch shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just, you know, I'm hoping for the best, man. But it's just a crapshoot. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's just a crapshoot. Hopefully I have a good night playing dice or something one day. And that <laughs> that'll do the same thing for me that the merch will. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, at yeah, the yeah, end yeah. of the day, it's just it is what it is, man. I live a pretty haphazard life and that has been to my detriment for the most part. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. But at the same time, it's almost too late to turn back now. You know what yeah. I mean? I mean, yeah. I feel yeah. like that was good. Good yeah, way to end it. Way to end it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank buy the so merch. Yeah. Buy yeah. Merch. It should be out by this time this comes out, right? When does this yeah. come out? Uh, this will come out not this sun the Saturday, following. the like following. Yeah, definitely. Okay, Hopefully, so, yeah. man. So My sample is waiting for me in New York right now. Oh, yeah, I just got to, you know what I mean? I'm I'm looking for first week of December. The guy that I got manufacturing is a close friend for a uh, long time. Yeah. And I love him as a person, but he's real shitty on giving me timelines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah I mean. That's the thing with merch, bro. Yeah, that's the thing with merch, bro. I'm learning that. I'm like, bro, if you just told me it took a month for the sample instead of 10 days, then I'd have planned, like, you know. Yeah, that's you're going to learn that with merch. Yeah, yeah. 
I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess. Yeah. Is there anything you want to leave out on? Like plug yourself or whatever? Just, where people man, can follow just fuck you with that? me, man. Fuck with me, man. Yeah. Hit me up for, uh, you know, anything and everything. Buy yeah. some sneakers, buy some clothing. A lot of people be intimidated because I think they think I'm expensive, right? Yeah. And for a long time, I was... I certainly did purposely brand myself as like a reseller that like wasn't letting shit go for the low. Yeah. Because like for a while I was a little jaded like after that dot complex shit. Like I got all these new followers and everything and it was like, yeah. yo, like back then in Supreme, I'm only getting six of these. Like, you know what I mean? I'm only like, oh, this hot item came, the, the BOGO came out. Like I maybe got a little backdoor action or something, but like at retail, I'm only getting four, five, six pieces. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I have 40,000 followers. So it was like, I could say a crazy number and get 30 people to say no, but then I'd get the 31st person to say yes. Yeah, so I yeah. kind of built myself this like little fortress that now nobody wants to break into. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. And then even worse for myself, once the raffle started popping, I really started like not taking care of my regular customers. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. But like, because it was just like, I can't sell you the shoe $1,500. I'm going to get yeah. 25 for it on the raffle, bro. Like, yeah. it doesn't make sense, you know? So I really like stopped doing the hand to hand shit. And, like, I'm, I'm really trying to get back into that now. You know what I mean? And prices yeah. are much better now and everything. So just hit me up, man. I appreciate y'all. If you fuck with me, leave a comment or something. I'll read it. I'll talk some shit back. Yeah. Hit me up. Call me. Text me. Whatever. Appreciate yeah, y'all. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate so you. Shout out Syndicate, man. Yeah, man. Peace. Like, comment, subscribe. All that.